Hi, welcome back at another tutorial of how to program the Korg wave state. Today we are going to look at some basic sound design for your own programs. In the previous tutorials we looked at creating wave sequences, which are the sound sources of your program. But that was just the start of our own sound. The secret sauce lies in how to add your own sound IDs on top of it. I've got multiple requests if I could do such an introduction into sound design. That's what we are going to cover in this tutorial. I will explain how the filter works, how the envelopes works, the LFOs and the effects section. These elements are almost in all synthesizers the same. It's the base of your own sound ideas. Of course you can use a lot of advanced tricks once you have your basic sound design ready. This is done through the modulation matrix of the Korg wave state. In the previous modulation tutorial I showed a few examples of how to add some modulation sources and destinations. But this can go much further than shown in the previous tutorials, especially when you add the shape, gate and step sequence uh, lanes to it. But for now let's focus on the start of your sound design adventures and let's look at the several sections. When you are building your own sound you need several components to create that sound. Uh, it all starts with a sound source. And in uh, analog or virtual analog synths, they are called oscillators. And in most cases, you can select a sin, a saw, a square, triangle, or a noise, noise oscillator. Those are common sound sources that you can use to build your own sounds. But the wave state behaves differently. There you don't have oscillators. In the wave state, you have a two gigabyte library of samples of various sources. And of course, there are samples of standard analog uh, oscillators like the sin, the saw, the square, the triangle, and the noise samples. But there are also samples from bells, guitars, drumheads, other synth sources, and many more. So, in the Korg wave state, it all starts with selecting one or more samples to create your own sound source. So, let's look at such a sound source. Well, we go to our inner performance by turning all the way left to start a new, uh, new sound. And we do what, what we learned in the other uh, tutorials and go to the timing lane. Set the first type to gate. We only want to use one sample for now. Go to the sample lane, press step one. I do this quickly because it's already explained in the other tutorials. And go to the multi-sample multi uh, selector and select one of your samples. Well, as I explained before, uh, we have the sin sounds. That's basically a beep sound. And you see different types of names behind them. Uh, like the Jupiter, the Moog, the Prophet 5. Uh, so those are samples from those specific synths. We also have square samples. Triangle. Well, and saw samples. And noise samples and so on and on. Just select one of the samples that you like. I won't go into the theoretical details about um, harmonics, like even an odd harmonics, but that's not important right now. But what to do right now is just select a sample that we uh, that we like and that we are going to use to explain the different parts of um, the synthesizer itself. So for this, let's create a select a sample with a specific sound. We're going to use a sin sound for that and I think something like Klamath Unison from the Simp Guru collection. It's a unison saw sound uh, that's good enough to explain every uh, everything that we need to know uh, when we apply those different elements to it. Okay, we have created our sample now, our sound to work with. But playing samples with no sound design is a boring sound, so let our own sound ideas to that sound source. And for that we have to use this section of the Korg wave state. Basically this is the synth edit section of the Korg wave state. And you can use these elements to sonically paint the behavior and color of your sound. So we have access to a filter section, an envelope section, an effect, sec an effect section and an LFO section. So let's look in detail to each section. Okay, the filter section. In the filter section, you can colorize your sound. You can decide if you only want to use the lowest frequencies of the sound. 
by using a low pass filter. And um, let's get a default low pass filter. And when you dial the cutoff knob to the left, you basically remove all the high frequencies. You can also select a high pass filter. And when you turn that to the right, you remove all the low frequencies from your sound. So those are the two most commonly used uh, filter types. There are also uh, filter types like a band pass filter or a band reject filter. And a band pass filter is uh, basically, it only allows the frequencies to be heard in a specific frequency band. So see it like a large equalizer and you go with your filter uh, between the frequency spectrum of your sound. There's also a band reject filter and it does the opposite like uh, cutting, uh, cutting frequencies from that sound. There's also a multi filter. That one is really interesting but also quite complex. And in the multi-filter, you can design your own filter uh, and how that uh, behaves. There's a great example in the uh, in the manual uh, that it's uh, advisable to follow. And um, then you can see how the multi-filter works. We're not going to covering that today due to the time restriction. And there are two uh, specific filters on the Korg wave state. And those are the filters from the Korg Poly 6 and from the Korg MS-20. And um, they have a specific behavior that you can use. Or the more ag aggressive uh, filter from the MS-20. And you can hear that specifically when you add some resonance and resonance is an, a little peak in, uh, in your frequency spectrum. <laughs> The MS-20 filter will have a much greater uh, effect on the resonance than, for instance, the Poly-6, if we use that one. It's more a beep sound, and the MS-20 adds some harmonic distortion to it. Um, so it's a matter of preference what you want to use. Um, and the other filters are just the standard 2-pole uh, and 4-pole. Uh, filters. So for now let's uh, use a default um, uh, Poly 6 filter. We have the cutoff to maximum and the resonance to zero. So we have the full sound as that we selected the sample. And now the first thing that you have to do is uh, determine what will the color of my sound. Um, so by Turning the cutoff and resonance, you're sonically painting your uh, sound color. So let's create a sound. Okay, so we have created our colored sound now in the filter section. And this is the bass sound we want to use which is using the sound source we created earlier in the sample lane. But if we leave it this way, it still will be a boring sound. So we need to add some life to it. And this is initially done with the envelopes. So let's say that we want to have a robot that turns the knob of the filter for us. We can tell that robot how we want the top to be nerd by painting an envelope uh, with how the knob should be turned. And that painting is done in the envelope section. So let's say that we want a robot that do, does something like this. So basically it turns the knob open and it turns it down. So how do you do that? Well, press the envelope filter button. We want to control the filter. After pressing the envelope filter button, you will see a graph and a line in the middle. Um, that middle line is your current filter position. This your end sound, the bass sound that you decided how your uh, sound should sound in a sustain phase. If you draw a line to the top of your graph, then the filter knob will turn right. So it will add values to your current position. If you draw a line beneath the middle line, below it, like this, um, it will 
basically turn your cutoff knob left and the release uh, will return it to your bass sound again. So when you notice, you can paint your uh, your sound. Well, we said that it be, that we wanted to have a sound like this, so that it turns uh, up and down. So when we look at the envelope, we see that it goes up and it goes down, and then with the sustain on zero, it stays at the current value of the cutoff knob. Now we painted the envelope, and when we press um, a chord now, you will hear that it does nothing. And um, why is that? Well, we have to say to the filter section, hey, the envelope filter is included into uh, to my sound, and I want to control the filter section through the uh, filter envelope section. And there's a knob for that, and that is called the env uh, envelope intensity button. So if you set that completely to the right, then it will add the maximum values of those uh, of that filter envelope. If you do it now again, and if I make it a little bit longer, you hear that it follows this uh, specific pattern. So now there is a robot that turns the dial for us according to the envelope that we added to this um, filter envelope. We can, could also do more extreme things like this, like this. Uh, open it quickly and return to zero. Or even say um, my bass sound is low or is from that specific value, but when I hold the note, and that's called the sustain phase, it should be in a higher re register. So it starts dark and it will end in something brighter sound. <laughs> You can do this in real time so that you can hear where you want to have it. So that's a very nice movement for the sound. Uh, it starts at the low position of your original sound. It goes all the way up, then it goes a little bit down with the cutoff knob and then it stays at a little bit higher level than your original sounds. So we have suddenly painted a behavior in uh, our original selected sounds. If you don't want to uh, have the full effect of the cutoff value to the maximum of the button, you can simply dial back the uh, environment of envelope intensity button uh, to make the effect less so that it doesn't, that, that the Cutoff value uh, takes less values. So now it only does it a little bit uh, instead of the complete uh, range. So you, with this knob you can determine the range. Great. So um, we've created our sound, we've added a an, uh, filter envelope and we've used the uh, envelope intensity to apply that filter envelope to the filter behavior. The next step is the amp envelope and the amplitude envelope behaves the same as the filter envelope we just covered. Think of it like a robot that is turning the volume knob of your sound. So basically we are going to paint again how this sound should behave. So this is a pet sound, so we create a little bit attack. Um, decay, sustain, and a little bit release. So um, let's lower the sustain a little bit. So what we did now is when you see this uh, graph, 
you see that it will add, turns up the volume of the sound, then turns a little bit back, and when you release the notes, uh, then it will slowly die uh, from, uh, from your sound. And you can also um, use uh, this button that you can, uh, that the velocity uh, determines the volume, the starting volume of your sound. Now, for now, let's say we keep that at zero. Um, if we take a long release, then the notes will take a long time. You hear that um, the filter, and if I turn the filter down, or the, the volume down, you will hear that it keeps a long time, but we are using also the filter, so. Now, why is this important? With this uh, amplitude envelope, you can create uh, dynamic volume differences for your sound so that it impacts certain parts of your sonically painted sound. Um, and especially when you are uh, using multiple uh, programs, you can uh, combine those sounds together uh, and create all kind of uh, interesting sonic uh, things that are happening in your, uh, in your sound. So an uh, important feature. The other one is the pitch envelope, and basically this is saying is doing the same. It's a very important envelope when you create sounds which have a strong attack. For instance, if you create dance music, it's a commonly used technique to add a pitch, env pitch envelope and uh, do lightning fast uh, pitches to, and this has to be at zero to keep the original uh, pitch, uh, so that it basically gives you that strong attack sound. Um, let me see if I can quickly. Okay, let's do it over here in a new layer uh, because it doesn't really work on pet sounds with long attacks because we are going to do this on the first uh, element. So if you, most, what most people do is they take this and you can. So we added this uh, button to have the effect on the sound uh, and you hear that it starts uh, with the maximum value and it goes down. Well, if I don't want to have it. With this button you can uh, determine at which level you want to have this uh, applied. So nobody is using it like this. But what you can do is make this ultra short. And let's change the sample to something that it's more obvious, like... So now you hear, there's a strong attack in the, at the beginning. Instead of that it's normal. That's also the way to create uh, drum sounds like uh, kicks or uh, snares. Uh, that's all done with the pitch envelope. So um, keep this decade value ultra short, set the sustain to zero, um, and the attack at zero, and then you can create, you can, then you can sculpt your own uh, attack sounds. <coughs> That way. The factor envelope is something we are not going to cover in this uh, tutorial. So let's get back to our pet sound that we created. We had the amp envelope. And it's already much more interesting than, I will set the release a little bit lower, than it was at originally only selecting that sample. Now we have extra section that is called LFOs. Now, what are LFOs? LF basically, LFOs are low frequency oscillation components. They are running constantly and you can select a pattern for that component and the pattern determines if it's a sweep or a pulse or a synth pattern. And you have to think of them as those robots that turn the knobs for you in a repetitive way. 
They are often used for filter movements, panning or pitch, mo pitch modulations to make the sound more analog, uh, for instance. Um, and we have that section over here. So let's say uh, that we have our filter sound. Okay, and what you hear right now is that uh, when we hold the notes, it's a steady, uh, steady uh, sound. And how cool would it be that it also keeps moving um, when we hold the notes? Well, there's a section for that that's called filter. Uh, filter LFO and you see here the frequency in which it runs. If you hold the tempo button you can sync it to the tempo by selecting the uh, quarter, eight or sixteen note or even the whole note. And you see the, the waveform it uses. If you hold the shift button you can browse through different kinds of uh, patterns. Um, and it's just like the envelope. Um, it will start here then it makes a jump. And again, uh, this, that's the way the robot turns the knob for you. So let's uh, select the default one, the triangle. If you turn the intensity knob, you will say, hey, I will add some LFO filter movements to the filter. So when we have it at zero, you hear now that the sound is steady. Now let's add some LFO movement to it. And with the frequency button, you can determine how fast. I, I will do it without the uh, tempo now. And of course, you can modulate that through the modulation matrix to make it more interesting, but Basically, that's the idea. So if we have it uh, at a slow uh, value and we just have to add a little bit uh, of movement to it, then If we use a different uh, form, a different uh, LFO type wave waveform, it will behave differently. Now it will step through uh, through the values. So here, it's not not a, a continuous movement anymore, but it's now a stepped uh, waveform. And so there are many to choose from. Random, then it goes every time to a random value. Can be quite interesting for specific sounds, not for this sound. Um, sweep up. So lots of things to choose from. The guitar. So it adds some movement a little bit after the beat. All kind of things you can create for your own sound. Well, let's use the original again. Um, and let's go to the pitch page. With the pitch page you can do exactly the same as with the filter LFO. But then apply it to the pitch of the sound. And why would you do that? Well, for instance for analog leads uh, you want some pitch variations to make the sound more interesting. So let's do it also on the pet sound. We select the pitch. And now you will hear that uh, it adds some real uh, pitch variations to uh, the sound. So let's. So let's use a lower frequency. This is okay, um, but the effect is way overdone. So it has to be subtle, subtle. 
So let's select num, well, 0 0.10 or 0 0.20. Well, 0 0.15, it's, you hardly can hear it, but it does a lot over time for your sound. So uh, same applies to the panning. I've added a, a little bit of padding LFO now so that it goes a little bit um, from left to right and uh, again according to this waveform. And uh, why do you do that? Well, to make it a little bit more stereo instead or one mono sound. Um, so an easy trick to create a little bit of spacing in your sound. So those are the most important parts of the LFOs. And then you have the last, the last section because uh, this, this video is getting way too long. Um, we have to add some effects. And when you create sounds, you have to know that um, there are three insert effects for your program. The prefix, the modulation effects, and the delay. And the difference is that the sound runs first through an uh, insert effect, and then it completely modifies the sound. We also have a master effect that applies to all the four layers. Uh, and that is uh, on top of your original sound. So this one modifies your sound and it adds effects on top of your sound. It's an important thing to know. So um, if you want to um, modify your sound completely, you can add, uh, for instance, some chorus on top of uh, on it. So let's add something that we can hear quite okay. For instance, this is a phaser. Now it runs through the phased phaser sound. You could also add some delay on top of it. Let's create a delay. And at uh, the last step, we could use a reverb for the complete performance. So when you add the effects, then you can finalize your settings so that it sounds okay with your effects that you've used. Um, so this is uh, an example. Let's, uh, let's look at the original sound. Let's use the same sound over here. We started our, uh, with this sound. That's when uh, you don't uh, do anything, or even reverb done. That was the original sound, and when we applied all the effects uh, and the editing and movements, we created from that same sound this. So here you have it. These are the basic elements of how to create your own sound. And although this seems quite easy to apply, don't underestimate the power it can bring to your sounds. It's your decisions that will paint the color of your sound. Every sound designer has its own signature and ideas. So I have no doubt that you will create your own type of sounds that only you can think of. Also try to think outside the box. Don't look at what any synth can't do, but look at what is available on any synth that you can program your own sounds on and think of what you can do with the tools everyone has on the same machine. 
So to finalize this tutorial, let me, uh, let me give an example and break down a sound I created a few days ago uh, so that I can give you some ideas how I approach um, those type of sounds. So let's find it. And this one um, is basically a Berlin school type of uh, sound and what I, it sounds like this. How was this created? I started with the uh, drums and when I created the drums it um, I decided that I wanted to have a bass kick on the one, the four, the five, the um, nine and the twelve and the thirteen because basically it's a 16, uh, 16 steps pattern and you know that uh, for every first measure you have the one, five, nine and thirteen um so that i created uh, at first and you see that the the kicks are created over there uh, in between i've added uh, several kind of uh, different uh, elements which i think would add to the drum so when you hear dry it sounds like nothing Okay, so it's a simple sound and the wave state can't, uh, uh, yeah, well, when you create drum sounds, you only can select one sample per, uh, per step, but you want to have a more living uh, drum sample out of it. So what I did was create a delay uh, on top of it. And when you lis listen to it then with a reverb, So basically that's an example of thinking outside the box. You can use the dry uh, variant uh, or use delay tricks uh, to uh, yeah, repeat notes on top of each other uh, in a rhythmic way. You have to set the tempo of course, um, otherwise you don't have any control on it, but you can do it that way. Then I created a uh, bass line, bass melody line, and that sounds like this. And I thought, hey, that sounds good. Um, and you can play it in any key, but um, there needs to be need some more bass uh, beneath it. And I simply added an extra layer with slower notes to create a new bass line that works together. So you hear uh, those two work really well together. Well, the last is just a string sound uh, created just like we just did in, um, in the tutorial before. And this is a uh, pet sound that uses um, a filter uh, from the more category and if you look at that it's a bent reject filter so basically it has a movement um, you can see that here there's a filter attached to it and some uh, variations uh, modulation variations that do nothing more or less than turning that a knob between the frequency bands so that you can hear that uh, sound moving Uh, another important thing for this sound is that you see that it runs between two steps um, and what it does it uses a specific sample on step one and the gate is set in this case to step two uh, so it will always uh, for the when you hold the notes 
hold the notes of step two, uh, but goes also through step one. So in this case, I've used two samples to colorize that specific sound. Basically, I've created my own uh, sound source um, out of two um, out of two uh, samples. So very nice sounds. And when you combine those all together, then you get this. An example of how to create uh, four layers uh, with the synth engine of the Korg wave state and how to make creatively uh, use of the effect sections and all the things that can bring your sound to, uh, sound to life. So let's end our introduction to sound design here. Experiment a lot with the techniques I've shown you in the wave sequence tutorial where we created the pet wave sequence and combine them with the techniques uh, I've shown in this tutorial to create your own sounds. So bye for now and hope to see you again in the next tutorial.